The Siege community has a lot of differing opinions when it comes to how the game should be balanced. Whether it be YouTubers, streamers, or pro players, they have all made some polarizing takes in the community. So today I'm going to be giving my opinion on some of those controversial topics. Keep in mind, this video is strictly my opinion. And if you disagree, feel free to leave your takes in the comments down below. And I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. Anyways, let's begin by discussing some of Macy J's takes. Okay, and for the first take from Macy J, we have the one that you guys are likely all here for. This is by far the most controversial take that he has ever made on Twitter, which is he wants to nerf nades to do half damage through floors and walls, and he wants to remove the ability for people to vault through barricades. What he means by that is he doesn't want people to be able to melee a barricade twice and then vault out of it. So he's basically wanting to remove window runouts entirely. And the reason why he wants to do this is because he believes Siege is in a TDM based meta, which basically throughout the entire season, Macy J has kind of held this opinion that the game is not in a very utility oriented direction and that he doesn't like the meta that we're in right now. I personally don't think Siege is in a gunfight meta right now. I think it is in one of the best metas we have ever had in a very long time. The last two metas have been the LMG meta, which was god awful to play. Everyone hated that meta. That was a real fragging meta, not this one we're in. This one is a way watered down version of what we used to be playing in, which was LMG meta, like I said. And then before that, we had the utility meta, which was even worse. It was basically the most boring siege you could possibly ever play because you never got into gunfights. And every round pretty much lasted until there was, you know, 10 seconds left on the clock and you were putting the plant down with all five people still up. That, in my opinion, was the worst meta. This isn't even close. And what I like about the meta we're currently in, and this is what makes me upset about a lot of content creators right now and their takes on the, the TDM meta, is that I think Siege is in one of the few metas that allows you to play pretty much any play style you could possibly want. You can play very aggressive in this meta and you can get away with it. You can play a fragging heavy meta if you want. And there's still enough gadgets in the game to allow you to get away with playing a very utility oriented play style without getting screwed over. And so I think a lot of content creators need to be giving Ubisoft props for this because this is one of the few seasons where I've actually have like enjoyed Siege and I don't think there's anything wrong with the actual meta itself. I do think there's things that they could change. Like for example, I think there's a lot of operators that need to be buffed. I don't think the meta itself is bad. I think there's some balancing issues, but outside of that, I don't think the meta's bad. To address his specific points in this tweet, the nerfing nades part is by far the change that I think needs to happen. Whether I think that they should do half damage through floors, I don't know. I think Ubisoft needs to look at nades in some way, whether that be removing one nade off of every operator that has them or something. Because to me, I don't think any gadget in the game should be able to destroy two pieces of hard utility and basically instantly kill you through the floor if they want to. And a lot of people will cite the fact that nading from below takes a lot of skill. Me personally, I don't think it takes a lot of skill. Basically, all you have to do is queue with a team that has the ability to yellow ping and give you a call out and you can get a free nade kill from below. There's very few times where I find myself really thinking like, wow, that nade kill was very difficult. I personally think that the nade problem does come down to yellow pinging. And so if yellow pinging wasn't in the game, this wouldn't even be an issue. And I don't think ner uh, nades would need a nerf, but because yellow pinging is in the game and because I don't think Ubisoft is ever gonna remove it, I think they do need to look at nades and do something to them. As for the vaulting through barricades change, I think they should try this in the test server, but me personally, I'm not crazy one way or the other about it. Now the next take, from Macy J that's on Twitter is one that a lot of you have seen multiple times. I'm sure a lot of content creators made fun of this take terribly on Twitter and it's become basically a meme in the community. He has a take about site setups here, which is that he thinks that all of the four site setups that he references here, which is, you know, the bank top floor bomb site, the chalet master bedroom bomb site, the canal top floor bomb site, and the Oregon kids bomb site. And he cites the fact that the head holes on this bomb site are terrible and that you shouldn't run them because most of the time they just allow you to get kills. I'll be totally honest, I completely disagree with this. This is one of the worst takes I think a content creator has ever made. It has had serious results on people's rank games. People have been sending screenshots on Twitter, sending screenshots in Discord, seeing their randoms reinforcing head holes because Macy J has been telling people to do this. And this is one of the worst things that someone could ever say in Siege. These head holes, actually lower ranked players need to start doing. You know, a lot of these head hole strategies aren't used in like plat ranking and stuff. And these default strategies make a lot of these bomb sites a lot easier to hold. Obviously you have to know how to play around them, but most of these head holes, if you don't have them, are just gonna cause you to lose a round, especially the chalet and bank ones. If you don't run those two, you're basically throwing. You're gonna allow the attackers to take half of the map 
pretty much for free because they don't have to worry about you swinging them from any angles. The canal one I can see not putting footholds in that in that wall. That's the only one that I could agree with Macy J on here. But the other three are pretty much vital to any defense on these bomb sites. Now the next Macy J take which this one's not specifically Macy J, by the way. A ton of YouTubers want this to happen. I've seen Gregor post about it. I've seen a ton of pro players post about it. This is actually a topic that goes pretty 50-50 in the community, I feel like. And so I just feel like I want to put my take on it. Um, basically, players are asking for the headshot multiplier to no longer be a guaranteed kill when you headshot someone. They want headshots to be a 2x multiplier to your damage. So basically your gun deals, you know, 30 damage. You're going to deal 60 damage when you headshot someone. They're basically wanting to rework the way gunfights work from the ground up. And I think this is one of the worst changes Ubisoft could implement today. It is a terrible idea to rework one shot headshots. The reason why I say this is because the game has been balanced from the ground up since the game came out with one shot headshots in mind. All the defender guns in the game have terrible damages because of one shot headshot. The reason why defense guns can get away with having damages under 30 is because of the fact that you can one shot headshot someone. If that wasn't the case, attackers would pretty much win every gunfight they got involved in. Not to mention things like the extended barrel change would completely wreck the balancing of the game. And I think this change is also bad because the same people that think that the game is in a gunfight meta, they want to make the game more gunfight focused. If people feel like they can take gunfights without the risk of just getting a one-shot headshot instantly, it's going to remove any incentive to play slowly. I think one-shot headshots incentivizes a slow play style because if you try to play super aggro, you can just get instantly tapped and killed off the spot. Whereas if you can just run through the bomb site and you're never at risk of instantly dying, you can get away with flicking onto someone and killing someone. A higher time to kill is gonna make the game a lot less fun for most people, including myself. I think one shot headshot would completely remove the fun of the game and it remove a lot of the character of what makes the game unique. One shot headshot, in my opinion, makes this game a lot more fun. That's just basically my take. Now moving on from Macy J's takes, I'm now gonna be talking about Varsity Gaming's. Varsity Gaming put out a tweet, well, actually two tweets. He said, give everyone the 1.5 scope. And in a different tweet, he said to remove it from the game entirely. This is another balancing decision that a lot of people in the community seem to be mixed on. Me personally, I don't really care. And the reason why I say that is because either way, the outcome is going to be the same. If they give the 1.5 to everyone, it'll remove the fact that the 1.5 is overpowered because everyone has it. But it introduces a new problem, which is that the 1.5 will just be the dominant scope and no one will use anything else, which some might see as an issue. Others might not care. Me personally, I, I played Old Siege and Old Siege had a lot of attachments that were way more dominant than other attachments. And so me personally, I don't find the whole attachment balancing thing to really matter that much. But if they give it to everyone, it would stop people from just picking an operator for the 1.5. But if they remove it, I think that's going to introduce uh, a whole nother problem, which is that now I think the 2X site is just going to dominate the 2.5X. No one will ever use the ACOG, which no one really uses it now anyway. But the 2X will become a lot more popular of a site and the 2.5 will never get used. Me personally, I feel like if Ubisoft is going to remove the 1.5, they just need to go uh, go ahead and outright remove the two times because then half the community is going to be on the 2X, half the community is going to be on the 1X and the ACOG will never get used. Okay, well, moving on from that Varsity Gaming tweet, I'm not going to be talking about a, another balancing change that a lot of people in the community have actually been talking about recently on Twitter. And it, this seems to be getting a lot of traction, which is people are advocating for ranked to only be able to be queuable with a duo or solo. That's it. They don't want to be able to queue with five stacks, four stacks, three stacks. They want that to just be completely removed from the game entirely. This is another terrible idea. It's going to kill so many players that just like to play the game with their friends. I'm one of those people. I only play Siege with three people minimum, especially ranked. I never queue with under three people. It's very rare that I do that because I just think the game is a lot less fun without friends and without the communication of the game. And when you solo queue, there's no communication. You're basically screwed because either you're gonna get really good randoms that are just gonna carry you, or you're gonna get really bad randoms that aren't gonna be holding their weight at all. Especially in rank 2.0 where, you know, rank doesn't matter anymore. So the skill-based matchmaking is all whack. So to me, this would be the worst possible change they could do right now because they have done nothing to make solo queue 
on par with a five stack and there's nothing they could ever do to make it on par with a five stack. And to me, you're basically just making the ranked playlist into a casual playlist at this point because no one's gonna be communicating. Siege doesn't force people to have a mic plugged in when they queue for ranked. Siege doesn't force people to have headphones plugged in when they queue for ranked. Siege doesn't do any of that to ensure that you at least have teammates that can communicate. It doesn't even bother to do that. So in the state that ranked is in right now, this queue would completely kill any fun that a lot of people have with ranked. As always, this video is strictly my opinion, and if you disagree, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, please don't attack any of the creators in this video. They're entitled to their opinion just as much as you are. I want you guys to be respectful, so keep it in the comments. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, I make Siege content just like this twice a week, so go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you don't wanna miss the next upload. If you wanna watch another video just like this one, a video will be popping up on your screen right now where I cover the new patch notes that released for Rainbow Six Siege. I'll see you next time, friends, and peace.